How does a professional race car driver feel about the Cybertruck? Let's find out. All right, Mike. Uh, introduce yourself, give us a little back background of um, industry you come from and what you've done. Sure, I'm Mike Collins, uh, uh, past president and CEO of the Sports Car Club of America Pro Racing. Used to run NASA SoCal. Before all that, I was a professional race car driver, did a little bit of Grand Am, MX-5 Cup, and then I've been a club racer in Spec Miata for over 20 years. So with that, I have thousands and thousands of miles of towing experience going to and from every racetrack, and I was fortunate enough today to uh, bring my Airstream out so we can see how that works out. Yeah, and I appreciate you doing that because on my channel, people want to know um, how this will do with the Airstream. Number one, it looks cool. Right? It they looks very cool. They, they kind of look, they go together. But then also the fact that the aerodynamics on an Airstream is much better than a traditional trailer that um, people want to see the efficiency. Of, it's not a brick. Exactly. And so that's why I'm happy that you're able to bring this out and help us out and help the channel and give people information. Yeah, I think um, it'll be great. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to have you tow. You're going to give us your uh, reactions, perspective, how you feel about the truck. What do you drive right now? Uh, to got, tow. A, got a couple cars, but I drive a 2018 Nissan uh, Titan XD. It has a Cummins 5 liter diesel. They only put that Cummins diesel in that truck for three years, so it basically makes it a heavy 1500 or a light duty 2500. Nice, nice. So that's probably what I think Elon and Tesla was going for with this vehicle is that heavier duty uh, half ton and the the lower uh, three-quarter ton truck is probably what they were going for for capacity and, and capabilities. For capacity and towing, that's really what you want if you're going to be more than the absolute occasional tower. Yeah. If you're going to tow once a month, twice a month, go camping, take your camper out, 1500 is going to struggle unless you get a heavy 1500 or light 2500. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that way we get out of the street. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get in the truck and then we'll get on the road and get your reactions. Sounds great. All right, appreciate it. Right here, you're, you're gonna see that's the trailer brake, brake gain. Yep. I have it set low. Um, that's where I like it, but. It's, it's, I normally set mine at 2.5, so we're yeah, in the one, same range. Yeah, 1.9. Yep. One thing I do wanna do, because I did have somebody comment that I should probably put, I'm gonna put it in low just for aerodynamics, but also uh, the ride and handling to focus, that, that's gonna stiffen the suspension, that's what they tell me. So, all right, let's, um, let's go ahead and get going. So you said that you've driven many EVs, A hat. right? What kind of EVs have you driven? Uh, so for, other than the last couple of years, three years I moved to California, I used to be involved in the Washington Auto Show. Okay. So Washington DC, uh -huh. not Washington State. Yeah. And uh, Washington being where the capital is, having a green auto show was always one of their big goals. So uh -huh. we got to see and have demos and play with just about everything. I remember all the way back to when the very first Prius came out, mm. how that was groundbreaking. Yeah. Um, you know, everybody exhibits, everybody brings your stuff, everybody offers like a test drive program. So. So you have a lot of history and experience with EVs. Um, definitely not a novice, obviously, in just cars in general. But um, how does this feel initially? Initially? It feels like an EV? It feels like an EV. Okay. Uh, I will tell you with the suspension adjustments you've made, mm -hmm. just driving around the neighborhood, I don't feel the weight on the hitch where normally driving just my regular truck it doesn't sag it's adjusted to tow flat yeah um but you still feel the weight on the hitch um i don't feel the weight on the hitch on this i feel it's heavy but you feel weight but you don't feel it dragging you down or, or pulling you back right no i don't feel it's gonna even though we've only gone slow I don't feel less front steer. Mm. The weight on the back isn't I see what you're isn't saying. picking up the front tires mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go? We're going to make a left. Here's your blinkers. Ah, okay, that's special. <laughs> there's a lot of different uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that are different on this <laughs> on this truck. That's for well, sure. Well, I've also, you know, 
being anything with a motor, you know, ride motorcycles and different motorcycles have their switches. Some on the left on the left, the right on the right. Some it's a button that goes either way. So if you've ever ridden motorcycles, this isn't uh, this isn't that. I guess difficult to you'd get used to it right away. One of my near dear friends told me you can judge how well your life is going by the number of cylinders and heartbeats involved in it. <laughs> That's a good saying. I like that. <laughs> now with this, I don't know what you would count this as. It doesn't have cylinders when you count it. Two no. motors, three motors, two, four two, motors? Two, two motors. Two motors. Two motors. So I guess you can count. It, it certainly has the ability of an eight-cylinder, but yeah. it, I don't know how that would work out. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that. So the regenerative braking in the lift, uh -huh. the D-cell is uh, my truck transmission brakes, uh, meaning if I lift, it does decelerate immediately, but this is significantly more... Uh, yeah, I don't want to say aggressive because that sounds it's aggressive. Not, it's not aggressive, but it is where I normally lift early as I approach an intersection like this to let the transmission brake start and then go to the brakes. As soon as I lifted the accelerator, the deceleration was very manageable, but much nicer than any gas or diesel. Yeah. I've never had a gas with a trans or an engine brake, but I have lots of diesels with engine or yes. trans brakes. And, they're great. They work really well, but mm. this is a whole lot better. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't use the brakes to come to the stop at an intersection. No. Based on my last experience one intersection ago, I just timed my lift, and it decelerated all on its own. It was fantastic. Very intuitive, too. Yes. Which is, especially if you have some experience towing. If you have no experience towing, I don't know, but it was incredibly intuitive that it just... It knew what to do. And then that, that, that hum of the motor. Yeah, the, like I barely touched the accelerator. And with the trailer, I'm easily keeping up with traffic. Or even with my truck, with a 5-liter diesel, traffic normally out-accelerates me from a light because I have no reason to stomp it. You're obviously working on fuel economy. Uh-huh, yep. I haven't had to stomp this at all just to maintain pace with traffic. And I fully feel like I could actually go faster than traffic which is not something I feel in my truck. Mm -hmm. I could do that on the highway in my truck, keep up or roll with highway at 70 miles an hour. So do, this is going to be a question, even uh -huh. though I've seen some reviews on this and uh -huh. read some articles over the years, do the mirrors extend? So I did a video on 10 things that I feel like Tesla needs to implement into the Cybertruck to help with towing. Obviously, one of the top things was mirrors. Now, the advantage that Tesla has with, with these mirrors is they're easily removable. The first prototype of the Tesla Cybertruck had no mirrors, no side view mirrors. Because you get the Yes, you have the view. cameras. So you could go right there. Right. And so, which, let me just show that real quick so people know what I'm talking about. It's an easy accessory for either themselves to sell or a third party aftermarket. Right, so I have to take a tape measure and measure mine, but I imagine they extend on the traditional slide out. Mine aren't power, I have to manually pull them out and uh -huh. push them back in. Yeah, um, five or six inches mm -hmm. to me, somebody who tows all the time, it's a feature I've come to like. Yes, I'm okay with these two screens if, but you can't get rid of this. See, it's, it's either you get the front view camera or you get the rear view camera. I can't have those two screens just here Can't have those two just and up. move this over here and you put those two screens here and you still get your map can't do that obviously you could just pull that up and leave that there but if you're on a trip and you're trying to follow the navigation it'll give you some direction here but i don't know for me i would like to see my map still right i, I like to see the map it gives me perspective on what's going on and what to expect coming up especially on the highway yeah i don't know why I, no i'm the same way I'm one of those guys that even if I know where I'm going, I sometimes still put the navigation on just to kind of give me traffic awareness. I agree with that. When I moved, to, I was always a big fan of using directions, but I lived in Washington, D.C. my entire life. So I kind of knew where I was going all the time mm -hmm. and knew the traffic patterns. What I learned moving to California is you can't possibly ever know the traffic patterns. And unless you use some intuitive 
map to get you where you're going, you won't know where the accidents are or what's going on. Because I could go to the same place at the same time on three different days to get three different directions. Yeah, exactly. So we just got on the freeway. How did that acceleration feel? Fantastic. Like, it, it, I was barely into the accelerator, not 25%, and that would have been equal to 75% of my diesel truck, and this had way more to go. Yeah. So before your Titan with the diesel, did you tow with any other vehicles? Oh, I have had them all. <laughs> uh, I owned a race team on the East Coast. Uh, I've had Ford F-350s with the 6-liter and the 7.3. I've had Dodges with the Cummins. I had a Dodge with the 6.4. I had a Ford with the V10 gas. Um, I had a Ford Excursion with the 7.3. That was actually my favorite. <laughs> uh, so I did have a Dually Duramax one time. Uh, nice. It was the only Chevrolet we ever owned in the fleet. Uh, I got a deal on it. Had I not got a deal on it, I probably wouldn't have. I did buy brand new, but it was like one of those just left over at the end of the year when they were still discounting cars and my dad had a dealer buddy and I got a deal on it or I wouldn't have bought it. Not that I ever had a problem with it, but yeah, just having experience with all the others. That actually drove really nice. Didn't tow as well. Um, I ultimately liked towing with the Dodges the best. Well, my brother, he's, he's a big Chevy guy. And I love Chevy. I have no problem with any of the manufacturers, but I love Rams. I, I love Rams. I've had multiple Rams. They tow, they drive nice, no issues with them. So, I mean, why fix something that's not broken? Yeah, right? I was I a just... Ford man for years. Like I said, during my Ford years, I had that one Chevrolet 3500 Dually. All we used it for was to tow race trailers, so all my experiences with towing trailers and having guys who worked for me tow trailers. And when we switched to the Rams, everybody liked them better, including me. I mean, so much so that I, you know, even though we had the diesels that we used to tow the race rigs, I bought a 2500 with the 6.4 gas in it because I felt I didn't need the diesel for it to be my daily, but it was the limited lariat top trim. It was like a Cadillac on the inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really enjoyed it. So then you're the perfect person for this because yeah, you, you have plenty of experience. You know what they all feel like. And like you, I have no negative opinion of any of them. No. I just, you know, my personal opinion. Before I bought, and I bought it only like two years ago. I bought a used truck uh, 2018 it's on with a five liter Cummins mm -hmm. diesel. Mm -hmm. It's got the same transmission as a 3500 Dodge does, the Ace transmission, which is really nice. But I was looking at either the Chevrolet or the GMC with their new diesel motor. Mm. Because I wanted a diesel motor because I tow the Airstream mm -hmm. a little bit more than regularly, at least once a month, if not sometimes more. Yeah. Just for a weekend, not, you know, we don't go on long trips in it. Variants in the Cybertruck. There's a dual motor and there's a tri-motor. Uh, the tri-motor is starting to come out. The dual motors were the first ones to come out. I elected with the dual motor, number one, because I wanted it sooner. Number two has more range, less power, less speed, quickness. I don't care about that. I mean, I don't launch the vehicle, you know, I'll, I'll do that to show somebody, but when I'm just driving around, I'm not doing that. Um, I, I, I feel like in every car, I have to hyperdrive. I want the miles per gallon. It, it's a, it, that's the challenge to me, getting the higher miles per gallon than how quick can I get there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's one thing. When I did my video going to Arizona, I had some people leave me comments of, you know, why are you babysitting the, the, the car? Because I, I just set it to 70 and let it take me. Right. And I go, I'm not babysitting. It's just one of those things where I'm, I'm not trying to drive fast. And even if I was in my Ram diesel, I'm not trying to burn through gas faster than I need to. Uh, I, I was driving this like you on a regular basis, down the highway on a trip to Arizona, there's no chance I would be more than five miles an hour over. Exactly. Only because every person that's driven by us has gawked at us or taken a picture of us. 
and it draws incredible attention to itself right now. So you don't need to stand out going fast. <laughs> no, no, no. You got another fan right there. Yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to uh, get the wrong attention, right? Exactly. And that's I'm not looking for that. We've only gone eight miles. Eight miles, six kilowatt hours, and 736 watt hours per mile. And I've been at 64, 66 yeah. the whole way. Yeah. And in California, this is as far as legally I can go over. Yeah, it's. They want you to go to 55, right? They want you to go to 55, but they won't pull you over if you're moving with the speed of traffic in the right two lanes. Yes. If you are in excess of 55 in the middle lane, uh, it's happened a couple times to me, they squawk their lights, they get on the speaker and tell you to stay in the right two lanes, but they don't pull you over because a truck with a trailer on the side of a highway would be an impediment to traffic. Yeah. So I've been yelled at on the speaker a few times to get out of the middle lane and get in the right lanes. Yeah. But I've never been pulled over for speeding. I don't speed, but in California, sometimes moving with the flow of traffic is, you know, 65. So, like, we're doing exactly. 70 right now, and, you know, that's probably as fast as you want to tow the trailer. No, yeah, you don't, you don't want to go any more than that. But even so, when you are driving at higher speeds with some trucks, with a trailer behind you, what ends up happening? You'll get some fishtailing, right, because of the wind. and uh, With a, what I like to call race trailer, a cargo trailer, you know, an eight-foot enclosed trailer that you could put a single car in or two cars in. Um, at this speed, because of the flat front and a lot of other things, you get a lot of wind buffeting. You can feel the drag. Yep. With the Airstream, you don't feel the drag. You don't feel like you're towing against the wind. <laughs> yeah. And that's the whole point of today, right? Is to, to showcase that. Just the overall capability, right? The towing experience. Maybe oh, it's... it tows. Like, I would... I would have no problem towing with it. I'll be interested to see what you find out for range. I looked at the Rivian. I looked at the Ford. I read the stats on this. It's so, close on all of them. But I don't want to be the guinea pig. And then they're all supposedly coming out with or soon offering extended range packs. Yes. So... I didn't know that. So you're open to buying an electric truck. Oh, my wife would love to own one. Okay, so this video initially was renting the Airstream, testing it on this tow run, checking the efficiency, how the Airstream helps with the efficiency of not only electric vehicles, but all vehicles. Then it turned into, I have a car professional. And so it turned into, Mike, let's get you behind the wheel. Let's have you tow it because you could give some really good insight as to how well it does. So now it's turned into selling you an EV. Could be. <laughs> you're going to leave here. You're going to get home and tell your wife, we're buying one. No, you're lucky that uh, I'm the war. I'm lucky I'm the one driving, not her. But she wants it. She wants it. But she does understand that. You know, without us owning 10 cars or, you know, we only need one thing that can tow the trailer. Mm -hmm. We don't need two things that can tow the trailer. Mm -hmm. So if we can have an electric vehicle that she can drive and be her primary and it tows the trailer, then that's great. Then he won. She is spoiled. She does drive a Mercedes-Benz AMG G45. Oh, nice. You know, it's a little pocket rocket. You know, it, it's fast. She loves it. So you're you're not wrong. She's got a lead foot. <laughs> she she's, have a lead foot. she's. I don't know. I'm starting to think she's the race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> so I towed to Indio with this towing my trailer. Okay. We did a camping trip. We went down to Indio. It was 95 miles. Got there. Didn't have to charge, and the truck still had 37 percent battery. Obviously. I wouldn't get that full 37%, um, but even if I got another 20%, right? You know, so I was I was just as an estimate thinking, and that's half of what the 180 would be to get to. Yeah, but I I think I can get once again conditions, traffic, all that. 
I think I could get 150. 150 on the different forums I've looked at and lurked on, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm an avid reader of all of the different review sites when people review cars. Watch them online. It seems like 150 if you order things the right way mm-hmm. and do things the right way, mm-hmm. you should be able to get about 150. Yeah. And see, that's the key. I like how you said that. Doing things the right way. Because, like I said earlier, people going, why are you babysitting? You know, why are you babying the car? Why are you only... Well, I'm doing... I'm driving correctly. You know? How you drive is how you drive. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to drive. If you want to drive fast, you just got to understand that it's going to eat into your range. That's fine. I mean, you drive fast. You want to drive slower? Drive slower. I had a guy message me saying that he drove... Uh, I forget exactly. Texas... Florida to Texas or Texas to Florida or something. I, I forget. But he said he was driving 55, 60 miles per hour. And he was he got crazy good efficiency and was able to go super long distance. And he goes, and I didn't care what everybody else was doing on the freeway. I, that's what I wanted to drive because I wanted to stop the least amount of times. Well, I learned when I drove cross country, I moved to California from Washington, D.C. three years ago. And I had to drive my cars and race trailers that I still had across country. If I drove 70 miles an hour, I had right at a 200 mile range towing a 42 foot gooseneck wow. trailer. Wow. And That's a big boy. That was with my gas, 6'4, like no problem, 200 mile range at 70 miles an hour. If I went 60 miles an hour, mm-hmm. I had a 260 mile range. Yep. I increased my range by, mm-hmm. so it was almost, it was weird. You, you, die, you try to do time versus, mm. you know, miles versus what you're spending on fuel, mm. what was more efficient. Mm-hmm. It was a little more efficient to go a little slower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you drove slower. Yeah. Yeah. On purpose. And, yeah. And you were in a gas vehicle. We're saying about gas stations, being mindful, right? Right, so I tow all the time and have to pull into a gas station and sometimes you have to buy diesel. Not every gas station offers diesel, but fortunate, you know, the app that I use will show me which ones have diesel. Mm -hmm. But I still have to jockey through a gas station to make sure that I get on the correct side of the pump Mm -hmm. and that I can get in and get out with the trailer. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, you know, how the Tesla charging stations work. I can see that being a struggle, but it's, it might be might be less of a struggle than if the station's empty and you can just parallel block multiple chargers, it'd be super easy. Yeah. But, you know, if it's a busy station, I can see where you'd have trouble, have to unhook, pull up. You know, I, we talked about that. That's just it's not uh, convenient. No, not at all. We, but, nobody should have to do that. I do apologize because I feel like I'm making you do all the work. <laughs> it's been a smooth drive. It's been a good learning experience to see what this is capable of. It obviously tows the weight and the Airstream. The Airstream feels just as comfortable behind this as it does behind my truck. There's no difference. I feel it less on the tongue. I think that's more this being air sprung than the truck being on springs. Yeah. You know, so it's the a air, smoother. The air makes a difference in this. But it's comfortable to tow with. I can see doing an extended drive with this towing and not feeling exhausted or... Mm-hmm. It does the job, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, back to, I guess, my only original comment, like we just changed lanes to get out of the merge lane. And while I could see in the end of the mirror exactly what I was looking for, it had plenty of space to the cars behind us, I would have liked the mirror to have been extended so that I could glance at it less. Yeah. Like now I have to look at the mirror and look into the mirror instead of just glancing at it. Well, and that's the thing too, right? Someone like yourself, even myself, we have plenty of experience towing. I mean, I bought my trailer in Ohio and towed it back. That alone was enough experience, right? But when you have a lot of experience you're able to judge things a little bit better but somebody that's a beginner if you get if you throw them in this truck and say go have at it 
I mean, the tone mirrors aren't a huge thing, but I mean, it's it's going to make things very stressful for them. Yeah, I think I think uh, Mr. Musk will come up with a solution before he sees somebody start bolting AutoZone mirrors on the side of his truck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got bigger fish to fry, I'm sure. Yes. But um, I, it's such an easy fix because there's literally two bolts, I think, for each mirror that you just unbolt it and it pops right out. Okay, so two bolts comes out. It could put my tone mirror. I could go on my trip. Get back home, take the trailer to storage, two bolts out, put the original mirrors back on. Right. So I'll tell you, like, this is going to be odd. The accelerator pedal, mm -hmm. the way it's sprung, okay. it's heavy. It requires more force to, to push move down. this pedal than the pedal in my truck or my Mercedes. And this might just be me, race car driver, knowing. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, because I've never, I've never even thought of it, or you know, modulating the pedal. But the pedal in this to go like the steady sixty-four miles an hour, sixty-five miles an hour that we've been going um, takes more work. Takes more work. Hmm, interesting. The pedal pressure is more. Now, I'm certain I could set a cruise control on it. And you can. Yeah. Everything else. Um, I typically don't use cruise control when I'm. I see Chevrolet just came out with that new ad that says, you know, you can go out and play all day and tow home with self driving. And I'm like, yeah. if there's no chance in the world I'm letting a car self drive with a trailer behind it. And you know, <clears> it's, like, it's, I, I get technology is going that way, but for me, too much risk. For, for me, too. Too much, there's too much risk involved. And, it, when you have a vehicle like this or if, or a diesel or w whatever you have, if it's capable, then it's not a stressful drive. And if it's not a stressful drive, why do I need the car to do it for me or the truck to do it for me? I don't need that. I'm looking at you and I mean, you're, you're driving it like if you weren't towing anything. I mean, it's, you look comfortable. Oh, absolutely. But I think you have to be respectful of one, the environment around you. I, I know I'm towing. I definitely know I'm towing, so I have to leave space, not only in front for slowing down, but, uh... Yeah, you're... I'm well you could aware do, of what I'm doing. You could do harm to others, and you have to be mindful of that. We've just doubled the weight. Yeah. You know, and... Yep. I'm certain somebody smarter than me, you know, force equals weight in motion and everything else. You hit something with this, you're going to hit it good. Yeah. <laughs> No, I agree. I'm right there with you on that. All right, Mike. So you drove the truck, you towed with the truck. If you could just give some thoughts, your impressions of the truck with all your experience, how this compares to what you've driven before, and um, just tell me all about it. Sure, I got to drive it out to where we briefly recharged it and came yeah. back. Yep. Uh, I think you take an advantage of changing the dynamic setup to the way it rides. It's fine. I would be happy to take a journey from charge station to charge station and do those several hours. No white knuckle, not fearful. Uh, you and I discussed it on the way. I wish there was a tow mirror option. Yeah. The camera view from the mirror in the center console is excellent, but I can't see myself wanting to change lanes left and have to look at the camera right while I'm moving the car left. Exactly. I just couldn't get, there's no way I could get comfortable doing that, changing lanes and looking at the camera to make sure the lane's and clear. And you should have to, uh, you should have to. And then uh, you and I talked about one other feature that would be super nice, if we could see both of the cameras in the center console without looking at the trailer hitch. Yes. It would be nice to have the... Eliminating the, the, the navigation. rear view. Eliminate yeah, the rear view for the navigation. Yeah, exactly. But still be it. able to have the camera view since it doesn't have the tow mirrors. Exactly. I, would that be necessary with tow mirrors? To me, no, but old school. Technology-wise, it would, doesn't seem like it would be too hard just to keep the mirrors up no, and move the navigation. And I think that's something that we talked about. It could be a very simple, easy software update fix. Absolutely. And I'm sure... I. 
I doubt that they're not going to do that. I'm sure they right. will do that, but I'm in agreement with you. Just some aftermarket tow mirrors, it's two bolts, take them out, right. put them in. When you're towing, when you get back from your trip, take them back out. And, or you want to leave them, leave them. You lose some efficiency, so be it. That's your choice. The driving, the way it felt, the tail never wagged the dog, the cyber truck was solid. I, I would tow something that weighs 6,000, 7,000 pounds all day long, wouldn't have any problem with it. The disappointing part was the mirrors. Yeah. You know, if that's the only disappointing part, the acceleration was amazing. The braking was virtually not even used. Yeah. You know, yeah. you just let off the accelerator and it decelerates on its own. And then you apply the brake at the very end. That's it. There's, it, it super easy. Super, very intuitive. And, you know, after coming out of years of driving gas and diesel powered trucks and towing that I've never towed with an EV before today, I've driven plenty of them, but never towed. I was surprised that uh, the trailer didn't feel like it was there. And, and, and the trailer doesn't feel like it's there in a 2500 or 3500 because it's a very light trailer. Yes. But this had the ability of a much larger truck. Yes, yes, exactly. And no I think doubt. that's the thing is that it's the size of what would be probably a half ton, but it has the capability of at least a three quarter ton. It, it felt like the trailer wasn't there. And the only time it feels like the trailer is not there is when you have too much truck. And it's always great to have too much truck. Yes. And I felt like I had too much truck driving this for the size of the trailer. I would have been c comfortable with a larger trailer, but no need. This is what I tow. and. If this is what I was towing, take the family out for the weekend, I would be thrilled. It'd be a joy, right? Right. And then you talked about the tires and no noticing how, because they're the beefier tires, how you're able to um, drive through potholes or anything. So I, absolutely correct. So early in the trip, size mm -hmm. of the potholes. California doesn't have tons of potholes, but it has potholes. It's got lots of seams in the road, but the size of the tire made a significant difference going on. When I expected to get a jolt or a shunt from something, it just didn't Some type exist. Of feedback. It just didn't exist. And it's not because of the air suspension. I could actually feel the tire going over that without getting disrupted. And then suspension wise, we when we took off from here and you started towing, we put it in the um, what was it? Focused. focused. The focus. The dynamic assist. Yeah. Focused. Or focused, whatever. right? As opposed to relaxed. Relaxed. When we came back and I drove, I put it into the relaxed just to show you the differences. Explain that because you noticed it so, even sitting in the passenger seat. So the relaxed, uh, it was a smoother ride where the focused made it a little more truck like but the relaxed almost made us seasick. It was spongy. Yes. Uh, it was a mushy ride. It, 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 you would think it was like, you want to talk about the old Cadillacs that float. It floated, but it floated to the point that it would almost make you seasick. Yeah. You could feel it. It wasn't bouncy. It was, it, it was a wave. It, it was a wave. It didn't yeah. porpoise. It didn't do anything silly, but it was like, stiffen it up just a little bit because I don't want to feel like I'm in constant motion. Yeah. It was very slow motion. It was comfortable, but it's like not the experience I wanted. Uh, the other thing that we talked about that I want to make sure we talk, the accelerator pedal. Yes. I feel like it, and this may be an adjustable, it's a hard push. After a while of holding the accelerator pedal at the same speed for a while, I felt, and obviously you can use cruise control or other things, but I don't recommend using those towing. Yeah. But while holding the accelerator pedal, I can feel that the force of that is more than at least the truck I drive every day. It, yeah. it was, you know, I don't want to say my foot, ankle, or knee got tired, but I could feel it. Maybe that comes from driving race cars and having a little more feel for it, but I could feel the pedal was heavy. Well, I know when you mentioned that in the car, I've never thought of it. I've never noticed that. But I think given your experience of driving for many, many years, driving many different vehicles tuned and, and, and made for uh, performance, yeah, your foot feels something that maybe the average person doesn't feel. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. It just felt heavier to me. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is, you know, it's taking a little bit of effort to hold the gas pedal. So in our conversation as well, you talked about you been exploring that I didn't know before you showed up. Right. You've been exploring purchasing an electric vehicle for a tow vehicle. Right. So my wife and I go to three local racetracks to participate in amateur motorsport events and one of them is 186 miles, one of them is 175 miles, and one of them is only 120 miles, one way. The one that's 186 miles is over the grapevine. We talked about it, it's mm -hmm. 7,000 feet of elevation. It's quite the trip. 
Uh, everything I've looked at and researched, you know, you got a 150 mile range, maybe. If you, if you do it right. Yeah. Meaning you're easy on everything and you try to take advantage of all the mileage you can get. And unless it, you know, looked at the Rivian, uh, looked at the Hummer, uh, looked at this, looked at the Ford Lightning, and, you know, looking for things that are capable of towing something this size, that you comes can find into play. It. Yeah. I can find something. I can't find something that gets me 186 miles yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, we may end up doing something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. talk, but um, this might get you close, but the yeah. elevation is going right, to be, the elevation. That, the elevation is going to be the thing that's going to probably kick his yeah, butt. Certainly willing to try. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To figure it out. A good, awesome. good test. Excellent. Well, overall, give your final thoughts overall, just on the truck of how you feel about it. So, because we know you love the way it looks. <laughs> I love the way it looks. <laughs> I, I might have had some choice words for the way it looks. No, t tell, tell everybody, what do you think about the looks, the aesthetics? I, I think it's ugly. <laughs> it, 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 it looks like something I drew when I was in sixth or seventh grade <laughs> in middle school. And, you know, maybe it looks like something I might have carved out of a Pinewood Derby car or <laughs> when I was in Cub Scouts. But it's fantastic. But once you get inside... <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, yeah. Because inside, I was genuinely surprised of the fit and finish for a Tesla. It seemed superior, genuinely superior, to other Teslas that I've been in as far as interior fit and finish. It was extremely comfortable. Uh, we talked about I loved the rubber flooring. Yeah. The first thing I do when I get a truck is put aftermarket brand name rubber flooring in to make it easier to clean. This just comes that way. It's fantastic. And you're how tall again? 6'3". 6'3". Six three. Six six three three and and yeah. you sat there. And I, I had plenty of headroom. I had plenty of leg room uh, on both. And when I drove and rode back as the passenger and behind me, any full-size adult could have sat behind me with the seat back the way I sit. No problem. It was really enjoyable to drive. But on the outside, it looks like a Cub Scout project. <laughs> Okay, so you're not 100% sure if you're, you're gonna buy one. Sorry, Tessa, um, but I tried. Um, but overall, you enjoyed it. The overall driving experience would make me 100% reconsider the looks. One, if it became readily available and there wasn't a year wait. Yeah. And two, if as promised, they offered additional capacity. I don't need additional motors to go faster. This is the two motors. Two, yeah. You don't need three motors. Like, you can get it and be crazy, but you're not going to tow that with three motors and do it any faster. Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. But if I could have two motors and, you no know, range. 200 miles in range instead of maybe 150, I don't think asking for 50 more is a lot. But well, the range extender that they're talking about is supposed to add about 140 miles of range. Regular. Of regular. So Obviously, that's going to that get... for towing at 70, that gets you even, to 20. Even, even if you get 50 out of right. it, right? If I got the towing, 50 out of it... If now you're at about 200. My truck that I drive can go 200 at the same speed this does, um, or I can get, like, closer to 250 out of it if I slow it down to, like, 55, 60. Yeah. So it's, that's about the range I'd like to be able to go in between stops. Yeah. And I'd like to be able to tow while doing it because without towing, my truck will go 460 miles on a tank of gas. Yeah. So. Well, we tried. <laughs> Maybe awesome. one day. Maybe awesome. one day. Thank I you. appreciate it. Really thank you so it. much. Thank you for bringing it. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. Thank He's you. He's in the Marine Corps. So thank you. And um, maybe we'll do another video. I'd love to. All right.